Hi all and welcome into this iRacing Hot Lap video. We're here once again in the Skip Barber, this time at the Phillip Island Circuit. The lap time I managed to set was a 147.571. Um, so in this video I'm going to walk you through how I did it, braking points, little tidbits that I picked up, steering input. I mean, this is quite a difficult circuit in the sense of uh, for steering control and your braking uh, and how you manage your blips. It's a wide circuit, which makes the racing fun, but as far as putting down a fast lap on your own in open track, um, the, white, the lines are wide, um, and it can be difficult to just keep this car pointing the direction you want. So, in this video, first of all, we'll break down it in three ways. First of all, I'll let you watch the full lap uninterrupted without me talking or my web camera. The overlays will be on the screen, and just gives you a good feel of exactly what you need to be doing, and you can re-watch as many times as you want. Part two will then be, I'll be back in the bottom left of the screen and we will pause it, we will talk through braking points, we will talk about exit speeds, uh, steering input, anything I can do to help you get around these bends easier. And then the third part, we'll put it in far chase, we'll just recover everything we went through in real time just to make sure nothing was missed and when you get that far, far chase camera, it can help me and you understand exactly what I was talking about from the cockpit view. Alright, let's get into it. I will disappear and let you watch the lap. Okay, now let's run through the lap together. Um, it's always important to have your previous exit of the last bend for the next lap to count here. So at Phillip Island, even more importantly, because it's a long straight. Um, so make sure you get that hooked up because you could follow my lap guide down to the T. But if you don't get a good exit on the previous uh, on the exit of the last lap, then it isn't going to account for much. Right, let's watch it through. Okay, so here you're going to want to stay left, ready for T1. I actually get my left tyres a little bit on the kerb just to open up the bend a little bit more. So we start moving over around now, nice and gently. And what you're looking at now, you don't need to brake, but you're going to want about, let's see, about 60% about throttle. Very, very easy with your steering input here. Anything too much in the car will loop. You need to make sure your tyres are warm as well. Uh, don't take this sort of aggressive line on your first two laps. Alright, let's get it through. So about 50% throttle, easy with the steering input. Back on the throttle, once the car, where are we back on the throttle? Here, once the bend's opened up a bit, you could perhaps be a little bit earlier, but it really isn't about pace on this bend, it's about stability. So feel confident in the car and then you can get back on the throttle. But as you can see from my steering input graph, the gray line down the middle, try not to move the steering wheel at all. You wanna ease it to the apex. Let's just watch that back again, because this is quite an important bend. So I start out very wide, I ease it gently over with about 56% throttle and then I'm back on the throttle. I get a little kick from the rear which I use to open up the next bend. Here, get all the way down to third gear, hovering the throttle again, modulating between 20 and 50%. And then you want to... I, I should have exited a bit better than that, I missed the exit apex. 
So let's just look through that. So this is like a double apex here. I get out wide. I'm full throttle now, but I should have been full throttle a little bit earlier and hung it over to the left a little bit more. Right, stay out wide here. Once again, little steering input. You don't need any much of this curb at all, but just use it to straight line the car. Okay, I think we're breaking point about the 100 here. Let's just double check that. It looks like I break I start braking just before the 100. Yeah, so I get down a little bit on the brake. I'm easing the brake down slowly. We get to about 70, if that, 65%. Braking a straight line. I use first gear's rotation to kick the rear out. Now, I know this isn't um, the easiest thing to do, but let's just watch. I get down through the gears. Then I use first gear to get, give the rotation of the rear a big kick so I can get around the bend nice and quickly. Down to the gears. First gear. Nice, big, on the throttle as quick as I can in first gear. Straight as you can, open the wheel. Second, third. Drop down to second here and wait. Just be patient, patient, patient. Full throttle. Now, as you can see, I didn't even get out to the furthest apex out there, so you can be on the throttle earlier than I was. Let's just look through that again. So here, it's just about patience. Second gear, hover, hover the throttle, modulating on the throttle. I was a bit late on the throttle. And it matters here because it's uphill. Okay, keep it nice and straight here. Don't scrub off any excess speed. Once again, it's flat through here. Just You don't need any of the kerb. Just keep the car nice and minimal input. Tricky bend here. Um, my advice is not to brake. Uh, my advice is to blip a downshift to fourth and uh, modulate the steering and the throttle input to keep yourself straight. Well, so let's watch it through. So fourth gear. And I let the rears hang out and then I'm back full throttle now. Yep. So as you can see from the throttle graph, I went, I started around the 50 region, worked my up pretty confidently, and then I dipped back down once the I could feel the rears kicking about, and then once I felt confident, I got back to 100 percent So let's take a look at that. Fourth gear. Trying to hug the apex, but not too much. Full throttle now. Straight line. Breaking point for me is the 50 marker so that 50 board breaking a straight line first gear to kick the rear out a bit early on the throttle here perhaps i could have got a bit more apex there so there's probably some time there early let the car you do want to let the car drift out but you also want to open up the next bend because this next section is about raw pace and not scrubbing off any speed so you don't want to be attacking the curb after this stay away from this curb it's sloped so just miss it and now it's about scrubbing no speed off the car. Keep it nice and straight. Very, very, very smooth inputs. That curb does look appealing, but as you can see at this point, there's a little bump in it. Um, it changes from a flat curb to a pointed curb, and you, you, you'll scrub a couple of miles an hour off. And in the race, this can be really important because uh, the toe people will be getting behind you is extreme here. Some of the most extreme I've had in a skippy race. And that's it. Now we just bolt to the line. Keeping it nice and straight. Okay, let me step out and we will run through one more time in Far Chase in real time, just making sure we covered everything. Okay, let's give the Far Chase a run through. I'll leave it playing in real time. I won't keep pausing it for you. You've already experienced all that. Um, so I'll just try and talk you through the lap, making sure I've remembered everything. And you can see from a further out distance just exactly what I was talking about in the previous segment. Okay, so as I say, keep it nice and straight. You don't want to scrub speed. I move over to the left at the last minute, just gently on the wheel to open up the next bend because you need the, the, the reduction in angle. It really helps the rears not kick out. Try and stay off the curb. Hang it out nicely. I do get a bit of rear kick. That's it, down to third gear. Patient, patient, patient. Modulating the throttle. As throttle as early as you can without heading too far out in the grass. I could have definitely, like I said earlier, done that bend better there. You want to be a lot more closer to that second apex than I was. Don't scrub any speed through here. That's it. You can use some of that curb. It's dead flat. And around the 100 board, just before I start braking, use first gear. That's it. To get the rears kicked out. Nice. Get some of that apex. Clean exit. Keep it nice and straight. Here, you're going to drop down to second gear. Modulate the throttle until you're happy. Be patient, though. And then once you're on the throttle, stay on the throttle. I could have definitely got on it earlier there. Head up the hill. Nothing to do here, but keep your car straight and away from this banked curb to the right of you. Okay, this bend. 
fourth gear. Try and modulate the throttle 50 to high end. As soon as you can get it straight, full throttle, brake at the 50 board, down to second, then first gear to kick the rear out. Get over that apex if you can, I missed it. And now it is just, once again, open up this the, that last bend so you can take it nice and smooth. Here, stay away from curbs. Keep it as straight as you can. You do not want to scrub any speed. It's a very... You can underestimate how long this straight is. And you'll see in the race, when you're racing Skippy, how effective the tow is here. It's the, the most effective I've ever seen at any Skippy race I've ever taken part in. Alright, so that lap time was a 147.571. I really hope it helps. Um, that's the whole point of the hot lap video, is to get you guys up to speed, get you to learn the track, um, everything I can do. But any questions, I'm in Discord, or drop a comment and I'll reply and get back to you. Um, Yep, setup wise, sorry, I always forget to mention, ARB was 8, SPO was 5, PSIs are the lowest, so 25, and brake bias was 54. Um, but yep, I pretty much run that for most tracks, um, and it works for me. Uh, if you have any troubles with the rear, maybe bring the ARB down to 7. If you um, have trouble under braking, maybe try the, the baseline 55, but I prefer 54 for its uh, performance. But anyway, I digress. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, like. If you want to see my next video, subscribe. If you want to know when the next video drops, that's the bell notification. Other than that, thanks for all the support, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.